Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Charlton Benefit, St. Thomas and St. Luke's Churches. My name is Rosie, and I'm a member of St. Luke's Church. Although our church buildings are open again, for some people it feels too soon to return to them, and for others the online service is the only way to visit our church during this time. So, whatever your story, we're happy you're here, and whether you're joining us from, you're welcome. We hope you will leave this service feeling fulfilled in mind, body, spirit, and faith, as we spend this next hour worshiping the one true God, our Lord Jesus Christ. Today is our all age service, and Kaz, Oscar, and Felix are going to explain to us what that means. This Sunday is all age worship. Whether you are young, old, or in the middle, you're welcome. Whether you're fast, slow, or average, you're welcome. Whatever the colour of your skin, whoever you love, whatever your story, wherever you've come from, and wherever you're going to, you're welcome. So now let us just be still and prepare ourselves to meet God. Now we sing our first hymn, Celebrate. You're very, very welcome today. The theme today is Unless I See, and throughout our service, we're going to be thinking about 
um, how we get to know that things are true and lots of people are going to help us think about that. But let's just first, remembering that we're in God's presence, pray together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. So, Roberta is going to lead our confession now. She's going to help us think about the bad things that we do, and the good things we fail to do. And this is thanks to Diddy Disciples. When we do things that make God and other people sad, it can make us feel heavy and weigh down inside, like this pebble weighs in our hand. When we are feeling sad and heavy, we can give our feelings to God. The Bible says, God will sink all our wrong things in the bottom of the sea. So let us put our pebbles in gentle and watch it sink to the bottom of the sea. Let's imagine God sinking the wrong things we have done to the bottom of the sea. The good news is God always wants to give us a new start. God gives me a new start. Amen. So may the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins, and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. 
risen Christ, for whom no door is locked, no entrance barred. Open the doors of our hearts that we may seek the good of others and walk the joyful road of sacrifice and peace. To the praise of God the Father. Amen. Today we're thinking about why Thomas said he wouldn't believe Jesus had risen from the dead until he'd seen it with his own eyes. To help us start thinking about that, we've got a quiz about, do these things go well together? After that, we'll sing our next hymn, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus, and then Ali, helped by Mary and Christy, will read the gospel. Turn your eyes upon Jesus Look full in his wonderful face And the things of earth will grow strangely dim In the light of his glory
Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nail and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have yet come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. In the quiz earlier, we asked which things went well together. Cheese and tomato, chessboard and pieces, hand sanitizer and face masks, they all go well together. Balloons and a drawing pin, banana and pickles, tennis racket and rugby ball, those things don't go together at all. But evidence and faith, do they get on with each other? Do they belong together or not? In our gospel reading, Thomas was determined to get evidence. Unless I see, he said, I will not believe. You've told me that Jesus who is dead is alive again, but I can't believe you, I won't believe you unless I can find out for myself. Thomas wanted to conduct an experiment and he wanted to look carefully at the results. Becky, who's a year six teacher, is going to explain to us now how her class goes about trying to find out if something is true or not. During science lessons with my year six class, I sometimes ask them to investigate or find out whether something is true or not. For example, whether a wooden lollipop stick is a good conductor of electricity. 
We will start with a fact-finding task to explore what they already know about the topic. What is electricity? What can it be used for? What is a conductor? What examples of conductors can they think of? The children will then come up with a hypothesis. A hypothesis is a prediction or a guess based on what they already know. In order to then test or prove whether their hypothesis is true or false, they must choose a suitable method. There are many different kinds of methods we use to collect evidence. This might be observing or looking at something over time, identifying and classifying things into groups, pattern spotting, research and comparative or fair testing. When the evidence has been collected, it is used to either support or disprove their hypotheses. Sometimes the outcome isn't what the children were expecting or hoping for, and it creates lively discussion about why this may be. And often we are unable to prove if something is true or not. However, it is the process of seeking and collecting the evidence in a thoughtful and fair way that we really focus on in our classroom as well as how um, we interpret and understand the evidence once it has been collected. So Becky's told us how we go about getting the evidence so we can come to our conclusion. For a bit of fun, we asked Harriet, Jacob and Naomi and Claire, Aidan and Ewan to do some experiments of their own and get some evidence. And this is what happened. Right, guys, what does blue and yellow make? Green! Can you prove it? Okay. Okay. First, we put green. Have you made green already? No. First, we put yellow. Then, we put some blue. when you mix bicarbonate of soda with vinegar? Oh, fizz up. Prove it. Look at that fizz. Please don't go over the plate because you're not okay. Why <laughs> what? It's so stinky. So by testing and finding the evidence, our friends are able to show that blue and yellow really do make green and that bicarbonate of soda and vinegar really do fizz up when you mix them all over the place. But let's get back to Thomas. So if we want to decide if something is true, we need a hypothesis, a claim we want to test. Thomas wanted to find out if it really was true that Jesus was alive again. What method did Thomas use? To see the wounds and to touch the wounds. What evidence did Thomas find? Well, he found that the marks of the nails in Jesus' hands and the wound in his side were there. A man who'd been dead, cold and still, was warm, breathing, walking and talking. And what conclusion did Thomas come to? He decided that Jesus was alive again. More than that, he decided this was all so amazing that Jesus really must be God. And that's when he said it, my Lord and my God. So it sounds like Thomas was a bit of a scientist. He used his method, he found his evidence, he came to his conclusion. And some people criticise him for that. They say Christians should just believe what they're told. They even say that it's wrong for us to question 
that questioning means we're doubting God. What do you think? Can evidence and faith go well together? I think evidence can help faith. This is why. If we've really asked a lot of questions about God, rather than just accepting what we're told, when other people ask us, we'll be able to explain much better why we believe what we believe. We'll be able to share our faith wider with other people and that can help them believe too. Second thing, when we ask questions and look for answers for ourselves, it can lead us to deeper faith. Look at Thomas. Because he asked, he ended up finding out that Jesus is God. Third thing, when we ask questions, look for evidence and our faith grows, it can lead us to do important things for God. In the end, Thomas was killed because of what he believed about Jesus. I'm sure when his life was in danger, Thomas would have thought back to that day when he touched and saw Jesus's hands and side. And I'm sure that memory, that evidence, helped him to be brave and determined to stick up for Jesus, even though it would cost him his life. So it looks like evidence helps faith makes it wider and deeper and stronger. Asking questions, finding evidence, can help us to come to conclusions that we believe. But what happens when it's not so easy to find evidence? When we can't get to the answers like Thomas found? Then we have to make a choice. Are we going to believe without any proof? Are we going to step out in faith, believe without seeing? Two of our friends are going to explain what's happened to them when they've believed without seeing. Hi, um, so I've been asked by Liz to do a short video of how I've stepped out in faith in my life for God um, and maybe some results of that. Um, I sincerely believe that living by faith means that every day there are things that you put to God and you ask, um, Lord, you know, can you be with me? Can you make this outcome possible? Um, and I believe that that is, like I say, an everyday thing. Um, I've learned in maturity that um, just because you ask for it doesn't mean to say that the outcome is always what you've asked. I don't see that as something that um, strengthens or weakens my faith um, because my faith and conviction in faith to God is not based on whether my desires are um, honoured by God and um, because I sincerely believe that whatever the outcomes are they're what God um, decides is right for me or right for the bigger picture um, so yeah I've had times where I've stepped out into a car journey or something I maybe not had enough fuel and I've said, oh Lord, you know, please get me where I need to go from A to B. And I have, you know, and that's been honoured and that's been wonderful. And it's felt like um, a confirmation that God cares for me. Um, and I've had, I've had other times where um, I've been in prayer, in faith that God will honour something in my favour. And it's not, the outcome's not been what I desire. Um, this doesn't weaken my faith anymore. Um, I really do just feel that you have to stand strong in faith and that sometimes 
um, we are blessed for not seeing particularly the evidence um, that we would desire and um, that shouldn't be a strength in, of faith in my opinion. We heard today in the Gospel about St. Thomas, who could not believe in Christ's resurrection just on the basis of the words of the Apostles. He needs tangible proof. Without this proof, without any tangible certainty, he couldn't make any decision to change his mind. Sometimes, however, we have to trust God and make very important decisions without any proof or confirmation. By trusting and believing and offering myself to God. Two years ago, we made one of the most important decisions of our lives without any evidence. No certainty. We have never stayed here in England for more than two weeks before. We were not sure what awaited us. We believed and trusted that it would be better, but we had not proof. Proof of how our surroundings will welcome us. Will we find a new friends here? Will our children be happy here? We couldn't answer that questions until we got here. Yes, it's true. Everyone around tries to convince us that life is easier here and people are open to others. But it's so hard to believe only what other people say. We started a new life full of fears only by believing and just believing that we will start a new, better life. And this entrustment was the most important. We have great friends here. Our children are happy. Now we can say, how couldn't we not believe it would be great? So Naomi has reminded us that when we step out in faith, when we trust God, we don't always get the results that we want or expect. Sometimes we don't even understand why things happen the way they do, but we shouldn't let that weaken our faith. There are times we just need to trust, even when we can't find the answers. And Eric's story tells us that if we always wait until we've got the answers, we won't take risks. And so we may never discover how God is waiting to bless us when we step into the unknown. So evidence is great. Answers are wonderful. They can strengthen our faith like they did for Thomas. But asking those questions, searching for that evidence, doesn't always give us clear-cut results. And what do we do then? Give up? Say, I'm sorry, God, until you can prove yourself to me, I'm not going to believe in you. Thomas was fortunate. He tested his theory, used his method, came to his conclusion, and his faith grew. And that's wonderful. God never asks us to leave our brain behind when we come to him. It's God who gave us those brains after all. But evidence isn't always something we can have, and it's not the only way to God. So when the answers aren't there, let's remember our relationship with God thrives on trust. Trusting God means putting our hand in God's and stepping out, even when we can't see where we're going. But when we do, faith without sight will take us to places we'd never ever get to if we waited for the evidence. 
faith without sight will lead us to say to Jesus, like Thomas did, my Lord and my God. Amen. So now Sheila is going to help us to say together what we believe. So here we are at our lovely Easter gardens where the tomb is empty, clear for us to see. Let us declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus died for our sins. In accordance with the scriptures, he was buried. He was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received and this we believe. Amen. Now Bella, Bennett, Akil and Sonia will pray on our behalf. Jesus, your tomb is empty. Give to your church the faith that death could not continue, that you have risen from the dead and are alive forevermore, that light is stronger than darkness and love stronger than hate. Thank you for letting us share in what you have done so that death won't be the end for us either, but a gateway to your everlasting presence. Risen Lord Jesus, hear us, graciously hear us. Amen. Jesus, the marks of the nails are on your hands and feet. We pray for sisters, brothers, and places that suffer in conflict, that grieve in bloodshed, where it is hard for people to say, Alleluia. Give to the world battered and broken and scarred like you your healing and renewing touch. Risen Lord Jesus, hear us. Graciously, hear us. Jesus, you showed yourself to your friends on the third day. Show yourself to us, Lord, and help us to know your presence. Help us to ask questions of our faith so that it bends and grows and doesn't break. Open our eyes to see you where we least expect and give us courage to step out in faith, even when we can't touch the holes in your hands. Risen Lord Jesus, hear us, graciously hear us. Jesus, you breathed on your friends and said, peace be with you. May we breathe that peace deep into our hearts until it becomes part of us. May we live your peace each day and night and share your peace in the places to which we journey so that all who meet us will know you live. Risen Lord Jesus, hear us, graciously hear us. God of majesty, give rest to your servant Philip, who having served his queen and country has passed from this life, full of years yet strong in spirit. As we give thanks for his life as prince and husband, as consort and family man, we pray that all that he has done may continue to bear fruit in the lives of individuals and the life of this nation. To your honour and glory, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God of mercy, hear our prayer and make us one in heart and mind to serve you with joy forever. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. 
Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the risen Christ be always with you. Alleluia, alleluia. Please offer one another a sign of peace. And then we sing our praises to God, the hymn, Now the Green Blade Rises. Mingle of this water with this wine, may we come to share in the divinity of he who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Amen. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Why is it right to give thanks and praise? Listen and we will hear. Lord of all life, you created the universe where all living things reflect your glory. You give us this great and beautiful earth to discover and to cherish. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. We thank you, loving Father, because when we turned away, you sent Jesus, your son. He gave his life for us on the cross and shows us the way to live. Send your Holy Spirit that these gifts of bread and wine may be for us, Christ's body and his blood. Why do we share this bread and wine? Listen and we will hear. On the night before he died, when darkness had fallen, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it and shared it with his disciples saying, this is my body given for you. 
Do this to remember me. After they had eaten, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks and shared it with his disciples, saying, this is my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. So Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate his love, his death, his risen life. As you feed us with these gifts, send your Holy Spirit and change us more and more to be like Jesus, our Saviour. How do we follow Jesus Christ? Listen and we will hear. Help us, Father, to love one another as we look forward to that day when suffering is ended and all creation is gathered in your loving arms. And now, with Luke and Richard, Thomas and all your saints, we give you glory through Jesus Christ in the strength of the Spirit today and forever. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. Lord, our hearts hunger for you. Give us this bread always. Church of God is not defined by the walls of a building, but by the body of Christ. In making our communion spiritually, we're joining with people everywhere to be nourished by the one who tells us, I am the bread of life. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Amen.
I'll gladly bow my knee and worship you alone forever you will be the lamb upon the throne and gladly bow you alone. Let us pray. Lord God, our Father, through our Saviour, Jesus Christ, you have assured your children of eternal life and in baptism have made us one with him. Deliver us from the death of sin and raise us to new life in your love, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, Ali has got our notices. Uh, good morning and uh, a special thank you to everybody who's contributed to the online service this morning. Um, it's wonderful to see so many people taking part and, and so much uh, to listen and learn from. And uh, a special thank you to Arik who is helping us review our online offering. Uh, we, we are hoping to be able to bring you the live streaming from St Thomas's next week. Uh, the newsletter will begin online and in hard copy form uh, this week as well. And as usual, after the service this morning, please do stay on and join us for Bible study, which will be running alongside uh, our uh, coffee morning chat. So today we thought about the importance of evidence and how it can lead us to deeper faith. And we've also thought about the importance of having faith even when we cannot see. We've heard the words Jesus spoke himself when he rose from the dead and greeted his followers, his friends, and the non-believers to lead them to faith. Now, some of our friends from church are going to repeat those words in a variety of languages. Hi. Ipasika imioli utolo malubenawe. Happy Easter and peace be with you all. Fu Ho Chi Kwai Lo Ping An Yuni Tong Zai. Happy Easter, peace be with you. Fu Ostern, Friede sei mit dir. I Pasika Imioli Utolo Malubenawe. Happy Easter and peace be with you. In Irish, Shikona Makale, Kasasana. Peace be with you. Happy Easter. Easter Mubarako, Tum Salamti Seraho. Happy Easter and peace be with you. Hi. Heria Pasika Amani Iwenawe. Happy Easter and peace be with you. Amazu Kira Agesanye. Happy Easter. Emilembe Jibenawe. Peace be with you. Wesołych Świąt Wielkanocnych. Pokój wszystkim. Happy Easter and peace be with you. So now, God's blessing. May the risen Christ Keep us asking questions and stepping out in faith when we have no answers. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. He is not here, 
he is risen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Our final hymn is Lord of the Dance. I danced in the morning when the world was begun And I danced in the moon and the stars and the sun I came down from heaven and I danced on the earth At Bethlehem I had my birth Dance for the scribe and the Pharisee, but they would not dance and they wouldn't follow me. I danced for the fishermen, for James and John, they came with me and the dance went on. Dance, dance, wherever you may be, I am the Lord of the dance and he and I'll lead you all. Wherever you may be and I'll lead you all in the dance and he. Never, never die I'll live in 